Welcome to the Silicon Fox podcast, where we explore the habits and stories of high performers. I'm your host, Mitchell Eschner. Today, we're diving into a biomarker that almost every blood test reports, but few people really understand, creatinine. If you've ever looked at your lab results and seen a number next to serum creatinine, you probably just glanced over it. But creatinine is far more than a routine lab number. It's a reflection of your muscle metabolism, kidney health, hydration status, and ultimately your long-term vitality. In this episode, we're going to break down what creatinine is, how it's measured, what it tells you about your health and longevity, and why athletes and high performers need to interpret it differently than the average person. Creatinine is a waste product that comes from the natural breakdown of a molecule called creatine phosphate. Creatine phosphate lives in your muscle cells, where it helps produce short bursts of energy. Think sprinting, jumping, and lifting. Every time your muscles contract and release energy, a small portion of creatine phosphate is broken down into creatinine. That creatinine that travels through your bloodstream makes its way to your kidneys and is filtered out into your urine. It's a constant cycle, so in essence, creatinine production is directly linked to muscle metabolism. People with more muscle mass naturally produce more creatinine. That's why a highly trained athlete or bodybuilder might have a higher baseline of creatinine than a sedentary person, and that doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. To understand creatinine, we need to zoom in on the cellular level. Inside your muscle, creatine phosphate acts as a rapid energy reserve. When your muscles need to generate force quickly, they pull a phosphate group off creatine phosphate to regenerate ATP, the body's primary energy currency. That chemical reaction releases creatinine as a byproduct. Once produced, creatinine diffuses into your bloodstream and heads to the kidneys. The kidneys then act as the body's filtration system, specifically through a process called glomular filtration. In healthy kidneys, creatinine passes freely through the glomeruli, the tiny filters in your kidneys, and is excreted in urine. It's not reabsorbed back in the bloodstream in any significant amount, which makes it an incredibly reliable measure of how well your kidneys are filtering your blood. So when doctors or researchers look at creatinine levels, what you're really seeing is a reflection of both muscle metabolism and renal filtration efficiency. These are standard ways creatinine shows up in lab reports. The first is called the serum creatinine test. This is the most common. It measures the concentration of creatinine in your blood, typically expressed in millimoles per deciliter. The second is the urea creatine test. This test collection urine over 24 hours and measures how much creatinine is being excreted. It's often paired with serum measurement to calculate creatinine clearance, a more direct estimate of how much blood your kidneys filter per minute. Lastly, there's the estimated glomular filtration rate, or EGFR. This is where it gets interesting. The EGFR uses your serum creatinine levels, age, sex, and sometimes race to estimate overall kidney function. Values constantly below the normal range are indicators of chronic kidney dysfunction. Now, what's considered normal depends on who you are. Differences mainly reflect average differences in muscle mass. If your creatinine is high, it can mean several things. You might be dehydrated, you might have recently done intense exercise, you might have higher muscle mass, or in some cases, your kidneys might not be filtering as effectively as they should. If your creatinine is low, that is often seen in individuals with low muscle mass, malnutrition, or sometimes liver disease. In older adults, very low creatinine can even predict frailty, a marker of reduced muscle reserve and poor health outcomes. So context matters. You can't look at creatinine in isolation. It needs to always be interpreted alongside EGFR, hydration status, and body composition. When we talk about extending lifespan and health span, two systems are critically important, your muscular system and your renal system. Creatinine sits right at the intersection of both. Low creatinine may indicate muscle loss, also known as sarcopenia, which is one of the strongest predictors of mortality in older adults. Maintaining muscle mass as we age supports balance, metabolism, and resilience. Now on the flip side, high creatinine in older adults often points to declining kidney function, which is tightly linked to cardiovascular health, blood pressure regulation, and detoxification capacity. In short, both extremes, too low or too high, can signal accelerated aging process. Optimal creatinine levels tend to reflect the healthy balance between muscle mass and kidney function. That's why many longevity researchers now advocating monitoring creatinine and EGFR regularly, not just disease markers, but as indicators of biological resilience. Are you a health coach or running a health course and looking to level up your client's experience? With Cyfox Health at-home blood test, you can deliver lab-quality blood work right to your client's door. Seamlessly ship samples back for fast and actionable results. Personalize every consult with the data that matters. Clients who complete a Cyfox test are 60% more likely to enroll in a paid program after their consult compared to those who only join a sales call. If you're ready to give your clients the edge, go to cyfoxhealth.com forward slash partner. And as a Silicon Fox podcast listener, enjoy 10% off your first bulk order. Now let's talk about athletes because this is where interpretation gets tricky. Athletes, especially those with significantly muscle mass, often have higher baseline creatinine levels. This is simply because more muscle tissue means more creatinine turnover, which means more creatinine produced. So if your laboratory flags your creatinine is high, it doesn't necessarily mean your kidneys are struggling. It might just mean you're muscular. 
Exercise itself can also temporarily increase creatinine levels. Heavy lifting, sprinting, or an activity that causes muscle micro tears leads to greater creatine breakdown and thus more creatinine in the bloodstream. One of the most common misconceptions in sports science is that creatine supplementation damages the kidneys because it can raise creatinine levels slightly. But researchers have shown repeatedly that in healthy individuals, creatine monohydrate does not impair kidney functions. Study published in journals like the Clinical Nutrition and the Journal of Strength of Conditioning and Research show no evidence of kidney damage, even with long-term supplementation when proper hydration and dosing are maintained. So for athletes and weightlifters, slightly elevated creatinine is an automatically red flag, but and is key it should always be viewed in the context of EGFR and hydration status. If EGFR is normal, you're hydrated and you're training hard, higher creatinine is likely benign. However, if your EGFR drops or if you notice symptoms like fatigue, swelling, or foamy urine, that's one of the worst testing farther. So what can you actually do to keep creatinine and kidney function in the optimal range? Well, let's break this into lifestyle strategies. Number one, stay hydrated. Dehydration is the most common and easily reversible cause of elevated creatinine. Aim for steady hydration throughout the day, especially if you exercise or live in hot climates. Number two, maintain healthy blood pressure and blood sugar. The kidneys are vascular organs. They're full of delicate capillaries. Chronic high blood pressure or glucose damages those vessels, impairing filtration. Number three, support muscle health. Create, creatinine reflects muscle mass, so maintaining lean tissue is protective for aging. Resistance training two to four times per week helps preserve muscle size, strength, and metabolic health. Number four, manage protein intake wisely. For people with normal kidney function, high protein diets are not dangerous. In fact, they support muscle maintenance. But if someone has pre-existing kidney disease, excessive protein can increase kidney workload. Balance is key. Roughly 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body is optimal for most healthy adults. Number five, be cautious with nephrotoxic substances. Avoid unnecessary use of NSAIDs like ibuprofen, certain antibiotics, and contrast dyes unless medically necessary as they can stress the kidneys. Number six, prioritize recovery. Athletes especially should allow adequate rest and hydration after intense session to normalize creatinine levels and prevent overtraining related to muscle breakdown. All of these habits not only stabilize creatinine, but also enhance long-term health span. For most healthy adults, getting a metabolic panel, which includes creatinine, two or three times a year is enough. If you're an athlete, take supplements or have high-risk factors like high blood pressure, diabetes, or a family history of kidney disease, testing every three months or more can provide valuable insight. It's also useful to test after making major changes. For instance, starting creatine supplementation, beginning a new training cycle, or significantly increasing protein intake. When tracking, always look at trends, not single snapshots. One slightly high reading after workout isn't a cause for alarm. Persistent elevations over time might be. So now let's recap. Why does creatinine matter for longevity? Because it repairs two pillars of vitality, strong muscles and efficient kidneys. Low muscle mass shortens lifespan. Poor kidney function accelerates disease. Creatine in its simplicity gives us a window into both systems. By maintaining muscle through resistance training and protecting kidney function through smart nutrition and hydration, you're literally influencing the biomarkers most tightly correlated with health span. In that sense, optimizing creatinine isn't just avoiding disease. It's about extending performance capacity, cognitive clarity, and physical independence across decades. So next time you get your blood work done and glance at that small creatinine value, pause for a moment. The number is a snapshot of your body's balance between strength and filtration, between power and purification. Creatinine tells the story of how your muscles and kidneys are working together to keep you alive, adaptable, and resilient. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you've gained some insight into this biomarker. If you found this episode helpful, be sure to subscribe and share it with others who might benefit. And as always, I encourage you to take charge of your health by staying informed and being proactive about your body signals. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on the Silicon Fox Podcast. 